This is Thomas Asbell, and I am reading my own problem. Uh, this is question 6 in the 2006 test. The question says, the function f is defined as follows, and the function g is not necessary for part a, so we'll go back to it when we do part b. Part A of this question says, find the interval of convergence of the power series for f, then justify your answer. For the ratio test, you must first flip the original series, then multiply it by the original f of x. So the equation reads as follows. To simplify this equation, negative 1 to the n plus 1 power and x to the n plus 1 power can be separated to negative 1 to the nth power times negative 1 to the first power and x to the nth power times x to the first power, respectively. After completing the appropriate mathematics steps, the final answers simplify to as follows, as the limit approaches infinity. As n approaches infinity, it simplifies to 1, leaving the series convergence as the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is then set as less than 1 and greater than the neg the negative 1, Making the interval of convergence, negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. When x equals 1, the series is negative 1 half plus 2 thirds minus 3 fourths. The series does not converge because the limit is not 0. When x equals negative 1, the series is 1 half plus 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. The series does not converge because the limit, the limit does not equal 0. Therefore, the interval of convergence remains at negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. There are five points to this question. The first is when you set up a ratio. The second, when you compute the limit of the ratio. The third, identifying the radius of convergence. The fourth, considering both endpoints. And the fifth, providing a proper analysis for both endpoints. Part B of this question says, the graph of y equals f of x minus g of x passes through the point 0, negative 1. Find y prime of 0 and y double prime of 0. Then determine whether y has a relative minimum, a relative maximum, or neither at x equals 0. Then give a reason for your answer. f prime of x is found by taking the derivative of f of x, given by the power series. When the derivative is taken, only negative one half is left in f prime of zero because the rest of the power series contains a constant times the variable x equaling zero when x equals zero. The same logic can be used when finding g prime of zero, as negative one half is the only number not multiplied by zero. Therefore, y prime of zero equals negative one half plus one half equaling zero. Use the same method for finding g double prime of zero and f double prime of zero. f double prime of zero equals four over three and g double prime of zero equals two over four factorial. In this case, y double prime of zero equals one over 12. Because y prime of zero equals zero and y double prime of zero is greater than one, y has a relative minimum at x equals zero. The first point comes from finding y prime of zero. The second, finding y double prime of zero, the third, coming to a conclusion, and the fourth, having proper reasoning.